Where do these people come from? Oh my goodness. So there is a tweet. <laughs> it always starts with a tweet. There is a tweet uh, that someone tagged me in in reference to Dom Lecrae. He calls himself Dom Lecrae, breaker of truths. I don't, foolishness. And I'm listening to this guy. He's on Alex Jones and he's just talking freaking drivel. He's just talking absolute nonsense. And this is before we get into his comments, because spoiler alert, his comments were on slavery. So you already know where that's going. When I talk about anti-black racism, when we talk about systemic racism, this is a very good example. And let me explain to you why. When one group is using their influence, their wealth, their power to subjugate, oppress, marginalize, or vilify another group, that is where we have racism. It's not about you saying mean things to another person. It's not about you thinking that you're superior or inferior. That has no bearing on anything. Your thoughts in and of itself mean nothing. If they don't render themselves to action, they don't mean anything. And then even when they do have action, racism is a group effort. You have to get co-signed by other groups. They have to co-sign your racist behavior. That's how it works. When we look at the politics, uh, you know, when we look at politics in general, when, especially when it comes to black Americans, this is called racism because you have white liberals, white Republicans who are doing exactly that. They are platforming, using their power, their wealth, their influence to platform, so, platform someone that is going to have real world impact that is going to have an impact on many, many simpletons and how they think on what they view towards uh, slavery, how they view towards racism, how they view towards systemic racism, how they view towards police brutality. And if they think that A, it doesn't exist, or B, it's not a big problem, then what you are doing is you are contributing to furthering racism. You are contributing to the problem. You're not breaking the problem. If someone has a broken arm and your solution is to simply just tell them, hey, act like it's not there. Act like it doesn't exist. Act like it doesn't hurt. Get over it. Lift yourself up by the bootstraps. That is not going to help them fix their broken arm. It's not going to do anything. Okay. It's only going to make things worse. When we see a problem, you have to attend to it. But it's only when it comes to black Americans that this country has kicked the can down the road time and time and time again. That's what that's what we're seeing even presently today. So when you have people like Dom Lecrae, you have to understand that the, the racism within politics is to platform people to tell to to make white Republicans feel good about themselves. And the same thing goes for white liberals. It's to make them feel, but especially harmful when it comes to the Republican Party, because they are trying to whitewash history. They are trying to, to minimize actual systems of injustice that is plaguing uh, uh, black Americans in this country, and some of them, all right? And is and plaguing white Americans as well. Not to the extent of black Americans, but they want to act like it's not happening at all. That is un-American. In a nutshell, that's what that is. So moving on with the video, this little clip, you have dumb Lecrae talking about, well, slavery, let me just get into slavery. Because you have these pseudo-intellectuals who, who aren't saying anything factual or knowledgeable. It's just that they get away with saying foolishness, saying drivel among echo chambers. And then when they come and meet someone like me or someone else, then they get, they get, they, they get that work. Okay, we saw what happened to black conservative perspective. He got that work because it's no longer an echo chamber. It's no longer just a bunch of seals going, oh, you're great. You're awesome. Now it's people who know what they're talking about who are going to push back on your fraudulent claims, on your false narratives. He starts off talking about slaves. Well, the word slaves actually comes from the word Slavic. That's not black people. Well, it makes sense. You know, the first slave owner and the word slave itself, it deprives from Slavic. That's not black people. Slavic people aren't black. The word slave came from Slavic. Explain to me, what does that have to do with anything? When did black people say that the word sl slave is synonymous with black people? When, the, when we claim the etymology uh, uh, of, of the word slave, that never happens. 
So they build up these strong men and they try to burn them down and then say, look what I did. I'm so smart. You're not smart at all. This guy is a simpleton. That's where he goes full tap dancing. He starts talking about, oh, well, you know, the, the first black slave in America was, was Johnson. I, I forgot his name, uh, Anthony Johnson or something. He owned black people. And you know what? He went to Congress uh, uh, to actually make sure that he had a slave, that the slave couldn't escape. <laughs> and in America, a lot of black owners had slaves. The first slave owner was a black man, Anthony B.A. Uh, Robertson, Johnson, I'm sorry. Anthony Johnson, he was the first black slave owner in America and the first slave owner because he had three indentured servants. Two of them were white and one of them was black and he argued with Congress since the black man owed a debt that he made up that he still had a right to own him and they approved it. That was the start of slavery in America through a black man. First off, I love when they constantly bring up the one person that they know of, right? That they try to put slavery on. Oh, the first slave owner. This is a bold-faced lie. It's a bold-faced lie. And if you knew anything about history, which he clearly doesn't because he's dumb Lecrae, first off, you should just shave that off, bro. Once your hairline gets up here, it's game over, okay? I'm just letting you know. As a man who has a big forehead, I wear a cap, okay? I wear, I wear, I do anything in my power to minimize the size of my forehead. But his stuff is all the way right here and it's very distracting, bro. It's very distracting because you follow the strand of, of, of his dread and it doesn't go here, it doesn't go here, it goes all the way up here. And I'm like, bruh, just let, let it go. Let, let, <laughs> let, let, it, let it go, bruh. Have some self-awareness. Nevertheless, that's not to, uh, uh, you know, as an ad hominem to undermine his argument, because his argument in and of itself is simple. When it comes to, to Anthony, I believe his name, Anthony Johnson, whatever they want to say, listen, these mofos don't know anything about Anthony Johnson. How on God's green earth, if he's going to be the first slave owner, when he himself was captured by slave traders? Do you understand that? He was captured by slave traders. Do you, do you not get that? So what are you talking about? He's a first slave owner. That's factually and patently false. Okay? When it comes to him, uh, 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 I, for, I forgot his name, Car Carlos or Caras or whatever his name is, the black uh, person who he went to court for. First off, there was no Congress. Okay, Congress wasn't established in like 17, 1700 or something, right? There was no Congress in 1690 or whatever when this court case happened. So that's not true, right? We already established that no, he wasn't the first slave owner. Absolute foolishness. And lastly, when it comes to this court case, what, what uh, Johnson wanted to argue between, uh, I forgot his name, Carlos or wherever, whatever, his, his, his indentured servant. Okay, because that's who he, that's what he was. He was an indentured servant. So let's let's not conflate the two because once you start conflating indentured servant with slavery, uh, with actual slaves, then that's where you get the, the Irish who want to say, oh, we were the first slaves and blah, blah, blah. No, you were indentured servants, okay? Major difference and a major, even bigger difference from chattel slavery, which was happened in, in this country, America. But nevertheless, what the dispute was, was that this man said that he had done his time. He served his time, but Johnson would add it on seven additional years to his servitude, right? He was like, yo, I've, served, I've done my service, I'm good. So they go to court. Johnson claims that, hey, uh, he, you know, I don't know anything about this servitude, and you know, he's mine for life. What happens is that the court agrees with Johnson, not on the basis of him being a slave for life, for him being a servant for life, but on the fact that they find out that, hey, they believe that, hey, very much, you have to go back into servitude. Meaning that, no, they didn't ordain him being a slave for life. That's not what it was, okay? You, they can argue as far as the contract, because that's what was in dispute how long he had been in, uh, a servant to Johnson. That's what was being in dispute. So when they try and say he was a first slave, no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't at all. As a matter of fact, before this case, there was a man named John, John Punch, I believe, who, uh, if you actually wanna know, he was the first slave, if I, if I believe. But even so, before John Punch, the, the Spanish, okay, when it came to Spain, they were doing slavery before John Punch and before Anthony Johnson. So when he talks about in America and everything, now, when it comes to John Punch, technically he was the first 
um, slave owned by the English. That's that's really the, the, the distinction. OK, because they want to say, oh, first in America, bullcrap when it comes to Johnson. John Punch, because John Punch, upon trying to escape his servitude, he was punished. OK, he was punished to be a slave for life. That was his punishment. Now, this punishment was very different from his white escapees who tried to escape. They didn't get that same punishment. So we're starting to see little, little sprinkles of what was instituted in America. So when they go on to say this, oh, we were all slaves and everything, this is foolishness. This is drivel. All, all dumb Lecrae is trying to do is undermine the impact and, and the evil wickedness that happened in this country. They always want to bring up other places. We're not talking. We're talking about America. We're talking about chattel slavery. Sure, you can say that it was all business. I don't disagree if you want to say that. There is a difference between saying, hey, you're a sir, you're an indentured servant, you're an indentured servant, and saying, no, you are a slave for life. Your children, your children's children, you have no rights whatsoever. Not the same thing as indentured servitude. When you start breeding people, okay, then we get into as far as the science where they try to use science to say, hey, you know what? That's why they have smaller, smaller skull sizes. Hey, they, they instituted policies and laws. And here's the thing, when they want to say, well, they didn't own these slaves, the, the North didn't do any, they were co-signing it. If you are doing business with a group that you know to own slaves and you believe is a barbaric practice, you disagree with it, you're doing business with them. Where do you think those products are coming from. It's coming from slave labor. So what these demons try to do, they obviously always try to obfuscate and try to claim victim. Always. They try to diminish the evil that has happened. And they've done that with only one group of people. They didn't do that with the Jews. They didn't do that with the Japanese. They didn't do that with anyone else. No one else. It's only with black Americans. Black Americans. <laughs> that they are doing this with, that they try to minimize what happened in history. They try to minimize or downplay uh, uh, the wicked, wicked behavior and the laws and regulations that still, even to this day, are in practice, that we are still dealing with in, in, in effect today when it comes to redlining, redistricting. So I, when you have people like this, this is what I'm talking about, there needs to be repercussions. When it comes to people like uh, Kundis and the rest of them, there needs to be repercussions, as Dr. Claude Anderson says. There needs to be social repercussions where they are completely ostracized, where they are afraid to go out in public because they know that they are going to get shamed. They should feel a sense of shame upon walking in public, that anyone, whether you are black or non-black, that you should be shaming these people, letting them know, hey, you are contributing to the detriment of this country. That's what you are doing. You're not helping anyone. You are nothing more than a thorn in America's side. That's what they are. So until we get some unity on that front, and I don't see that happening because everything is ran off of hatred, right? That's why Charlie Kirk gets to say what he gets to say. That's why Kunis Owens gets to say what she gets to say. That's why you have these individuals. Dom, dumb Lecrae gets to say what he gets to say. Because there is a still, unfortunately, a palpable section of this country that is anti-black, that they despise black people and that they want to go back to the good old days, all right? During the times of slavery. That, unfortunately, is a reality of this country. And that is, unfortunately, what we will always be fighting. Until the day we get reparation because that will be the day that they will not be able to institute racism because they will no longer have the wealth, the influence, and the power to marginalize and oppress said group of people. They won't be able to have it. Anyways, guys, that's the video. Um, there really is no either or here. Um, this man is, is, is a simpleton. And furthermore, it, it's alleged that he's a Haitian. So it, it makes it even worse. It makes it even worse. I can't stand when they get the Vivek Ramaswamis, uh, the Dinesh D'Souza's, uh, the Nikki Haley's that come over here, or well, I forgot her actual name, when they come over here and then you, like you talk ill of black Americans. Like you're not even from here, right? And you come over here and talk trash about, uh, about black American history, okay, about American history that you know nothing of. You know a bastardized version in order to get your little coins. And I think that's disgusting. But nevertheless, if you happen to disagree with this video, you're more than welcome to call in during Disagreement Day, which is typically held Friday through Sunday. There'll be a number on screen. You call in, we duke it out. 
Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, comment. Let me know what you guys think about dumb Lecrae and uh, the foolishness that is uh, Republican Party right now. Uh, and subscribe. And oh, that fun stuff. Till next time, guys, be amazing. Can he argue with Congress since the black man owed a debt that he made up?